All right, well, welcome back everyone, and we want to get started with our, one of our first videos on some new content for Chem 2210 for Organic 1. So we're going to start covering some of Chapter 4 material where we're going to look at hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbons are probably the most, the, the most important group of organic molecules. These are molecules that consist solely of carbon and hydrogen bonds. What we want to do is look a little bit at their properties and why, and, and sort of uh, some patterns that we observe in their properties then we'll look at some analysis of their three-dimensional shape and uh, kind of tie that into building on things that we'll do a little bit later. So for now, with this, as a start to this, I'll just kind of move myself off to the side here and talk a little bit about why hydrocarbons themselves are so important. Of course, probably one of the most important hydrocarbons that we uh, have everyday experience with is gasoline. Uh, if you were sitting in a classroom in front of me, I would say in some way or other gasoline was involved in getting you into that room, but whatever, however you move around, gasoline's involved in it in some way. Even if you bike or walk lots of places and don't use a vehicle or don't own a vehicle, there's gasoline involved in shipping the food that you consume into the store that you bought it from. And so hydrocarbons are an important component of gasoline. One of the most com uh, important components of gasoline, you often hear this, especially if you go to gas stations in the United States, you hear them talk about so-called octane rating. And so octane is one of the hydrocarbons we'll look at in a little bit more detail in a minute. Nothing but carbon and hydrogen bonds, so C8, H18, and the, depic the depiction of that structure shown there. That, in fact, actually isn't the octane that's referred to in gasoline. The main molecule that's referred to in gasoline is isooctane, or this 224-trimethylpentane, same molecular formula, but just a different uh, structure to it. And we'll talk about those in just a very brief minute as well, too. So that octane is a big part, is what's in gasoline, and the more of that octane, the higher the so-called octane rating. So things like premium fuels would have a high, higher proportion of octane, along with a number of other hydrocarbons that are in there. And so before we go too further into the new material, I just want to stop and take a bit of a minute to talk about how we depict or represent organic molecules on paper when we draw them. And these will be very important skills as we go forward in this particular course, because of course how you draw an organic molecule on a piece of paper is going to be a critical component of how you get evaluated in this course. So it's a skill we want you to be able to, to master early on, and there's some good exercises to practice this both in the early chapters of the Klein textbook and in the second language textbooks as well. And so there's three main ways that we represent organic molecules. Wedge and dash, formulas, and line drawings, which are already shown on this particular slide. And so I just want to take us through a little bit about how these formulas are, how we represent these different ways of looking at organic molecules. And so I want to do that by just drawing them out myself and I know this is all online and on video, um, but what I'd encourage you to do is practice this as I'm doing it here on, on the video. Practice it yourself. Make your own paper notes so you get the feel of drawing these organic molecules. There is some artwork to it, as it were, some skills to be mastered with that as well. Of course, if you were in class, you'd be following along with a piece of paper and notes by doing this as well. So we'll see how this works uh, for this particular example here. I just want to switch to a different uh, software. Let's see if we can uh, show you how to draw these kind of structures. So what I want to do is I'm going to draw the wedge and dash representation of a molecule C4, H10. So I'll show the four carbon atoms connected together by these kind of sigma bonds, and then a hydrogen atom at the end. And a hydrogen atom at the end. And these are all these lines that we're drawing are all meant to be in the plane of the piece of paper or on the screen, as it were, that we're drawing them on. And then the rest of the individual carbon atoms will draw in the remainder of the hydrogen atoms. And what we're attempting to do with this depiction of, a, of an atom is to try and represent as best we can that 109.5 degree bond angle at each of these sp3 hybridized carbon atoms in a way that we best can, can do that. And so we draw a dash line and a wedge line on each one of these carbon atoms. I do have to admit, honestly, I'm a bit new to the iPad and drawing the chemical structures on there. Uh, come back next year, this will be much smoother. And so this is our wedge and dash drawing. 
the wedge in gas drawing shows that, that a hydrogen, so for example, this hydrogen here is pointing out from the plane of the paper, plane of the screen towards us, best representing that 109.5 degree bond angle around that terminal carbon as best we can. This hydrogen over here and this carbon are lying flat in the plane of the screen or plane of the paper. And this hydrogen that's on the dashed bond is going back away from us into the plane of the screen, plane of the paper. We've done that all the way around. So this is a, a, a representation of our view of the three-dimensional shape of the molecule itself. I will say, if you're having a little bit of trouble visualizing this on the flat surface that I've drawn in front of you, and if you draw it out yourself as we're talking here, you might get the opportunity to kind of feel for what it's like to draw these. But if you get the model kit from the bookstore, that'll give you an excellent idea of how these three-dimensional shapes of these molecules represent. You can even see how it lines up quite nicely with what you've drawn here. So next, I'll talk about the uh, formula drawing. Again, C4H10 will use the same molecule for that we did just a second ago, C4H10. That's, of course, butane. And there's a separate video that talks a little bit about the nomenclature, if you're kind of wondering about it uh, in this section here, about how we deal it with an organic one nomenclature. So take a look at that video and get some of your questions answered there, please. The formula drawing for the same molecule that we just drew out a minute ago is this. And what we're doing here is we're sacrificing any of the three-dimensional information that the wedge and dash formula gave us and replacing it with some information about the formula. What hydrogen atoms are attached to which carbon and, and how many carbons are attached together and what orientation they're attached. Of course, for a molecule like butane, that isn't much of a, a challenge to depict that, but we'll, of course, get to more complicated molecules a little bit later and we'll see that this is a very useful way to depict it. And if you've kind of played along with me, you'll see that going between the uh, wedge and dash representation that we had a few minutes ago, that's much more difficult to draw than this uh, formula drawing that we have here. And so it's a little quicker, a little bit easier to represent, but we still get some of the, the, the structural information, the formula information. And then the final depiction that we most commonly use in organic chemistry is the line drawing. Again, the same molecule, C4H10. Again, that's butane, and the line drawing is very simple. It's just a line that where we're depicting only the carbon atoms in the molecule. We're only explicitly drawing the carbon atoms out in the molecule. And so what we have here is the, the, the carbon atoms at the end are just represented by sort of the, the ending of the molecule here. That's the carbon atoms. And we haven't explicitly drawn in the hydrogen atoms, but there we're implying that those carbons each have three hydrogens at, attached to them. And each of these corners, if you will, or bends in the molecule implies an sp3 hybridized carbon atom, two hydrogens attached to each of those carbon atoms, and just another depiction of the same molecule that we've drawn, drawn a couple of times here before. Now again, if you've played along with me and you've drawn out that line drawing, you'll see that it's, it's much quicker, much easier to draw that out. It saves us a lot of explicit hydrogen atoms. Every organic molecule that we encounter is going to have a hydrogen atom attached to a carbon for the most part. So we don't need to waste a lot of time drawing those in if we're in a rush to sort of get to the important parts. And so we will interchangeably use each of these three depictions. On some occasions, the line drawing will be the thing that we want to use to just give us a quick representation, maybe focus on some other part of the molecule or some other functional group. The formula drawing we'll use on some occasions where we want to focus on the, on the changes to a particular carbon atom, for example, and there we'd use that with maybe a functional group. And sometimes we'll even use combinations of line and formula drawings. And then wedge and dash we'll use quite a bit. In fact, even towards the end of chapter four, the next series of videos will be drawing out these three-dimensional shapes of these molecules in a way that we want to focus on the, on the representation of that three-dimensional shape. So I'd encourage you to become familiar with each of these three depictions of organic molecules and make some use of the model kit in relating what you see on paper or on screen 
to uh, what those model kits depict that they look like. And so I'll stop for this part of part one of the chapter four material that I'll record, and the next video that I'll record talks a little bit more about constitutional isomers.